British firm Aerolis is almost certain to win a contract to replace the Red Arrow's aging Hawk T1 trainers. The Royal Air Force RAF, aerobatic display team have been using the Hawk T1 for more than 40 years to perform in almost 5,000 public displays at home and abroad. The decision has been made to fund 12 new aircraft, 9 for the team and 3 operational spares. Behind its dazzling displays the Red Arrows, based at RAF Scampton, showcases British industry and this, combined with the government's global Britain aspirations, means the new plane must be up-built. Sources say the RAF has its sights on Aerolis, which has already designed the first British jet fighter since the 1970s and has been awarded a three-year research and development contract with the RAF. Last night an RAF source said, the Red Arrows promote British industry and the plane needs to be made in the UK. Aerolis will design, develop and deliver the Hawk T1 replacement. Though officially the order date is being played down, given that it will take at least five years or longer before the plane is in operational service, there's an acute awareness that the decision has to be made soon. An announcement is pending and will be made before Christmas. Orioles is producing five variants, the first of which has completed Phase 1 and Phase 2 development and is due to fly in 2024. The unique modular system means that each variant will share a common core fuselage and avionics, but everything else, from the tail to the wings and engines, can be customized to suit the client. The firm has received funding from the RAF's Rapid Capabilities Office, also leading work on Britain's new Tempest Future Combat Air System FCAS, program, and RCO Chief Air Commodore Jez Holmes said the Aerolis concept offers an extremely disruptive approach to design, modeling and certification processes in military aircraft. Though the cost of the deal has not been finalized, the company claims its innovative design would offer the RAF a 30% saving compared with other, non-UK, rivals when it comes to replacing the newer Hawk T2 trainer. And, with production facilities earmarked for South Wales the move would also tick both the government's leveling up and union boosting boxes, with full-scale production resulting in 200 high-value design jobs plus a further 3,800 jobs created in a future potential supply chain. Reacting to the RAF funding grant, Airless CEO Tristan Crawford said as well as helping to enable rapid, digitally driven development and the certification of flexible, open architecture aircraft systems, this supports UK prosperity and the government goal to champion British innovation. We are creating a significant export and global relationship development opportunity for the UK. Though the firm would not confirm the news, a spokesman said, obviously with the retirement date being announced for the Hawk T1 there is speculation around how that important UK capability is preserved and that Aerolis is the only prospect of a British successor. By combining a single fuselage and one set of avionics with different types of wings, engines and mission systems, you could obtain a wide range of configurations at a much lower cost. In fact, Aerolis claims that switching from mixed fleets to this modular concept could cut more than 30% of costs for military customers. According to the manufacturer, this strategy has been successfully used in commercial aviation but had not been implemented by military forces until now. This groundbreaking concept is centered around the Common Core Fuselage CCF, which acts as the backbone for all the versions, ranging from basic and advanced training, operational training, light combat and acrobatic display. The open architecture avionics, digitally developed, are the other main common element for all modules, easy to reconfigure for specific types of missions and to update with new technologies. Two interchangeable cockpits and two wing configurations enable the Aerolis jet to be transformed for different types of missions. The company even plans to add three other wing versions for a wider range of configurations. When it comes to engines, flexibility is also key. The aircraft manufacturer has recently partnered up with Rolls-Royce, precisely for developing a propulsion system technology that can be used across all jet versions. During the first phase of the collaboration, Rolls-Royce will be testing propulsion systems for the pre-production model and focusing on integrating them into the aircraft's digital design process. Instead of dealing with the costs of logistics, operation and training for each aircraft, UK's Royal Air Force could cut costs significantly and enjoy much more flexibility with the help of this innovative modular concept.
Aerolis is getting ready to enter the pre-production phase and hopes its modular aircraft will conduct the first flight in three years from now.